The summer of 1953. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin passed away 100 days ago. Moscow has sent classified instructions to every corner of the Soviet Union. The biography of a man whose name is often mentioned only in whispers is to be removed from the great Soviet encyclopedia and destroyed. State Security Marshal Lavrenti Beria used to supervise both the USSR's gulags and the entire repression machine of the Soviet Union. Many episodes of his life and the circumstances of his death are still couched in mystery. This army bunker in central Moscow is more than 10 meters underground. Lavrenti Beria found himself here soon after his arrest in the Kremlin. There was no chance of escape or help from the outside. Beria was interrogated by none other than the Soviet Union's prosecutor general. One of the initial charges put against him was for his participation in widespread political repressions. This list contains the names of 36 people. It bears your instruction, arrest everybody. There is also a note saying first category, which means execution. I confess that all those resolutions were approved by myself in person. The 40 volumes of the Beria case would fill a couple of such shelves. Here you can find records of interrogations and indictments. For some reason, most of these materials have not yet been declassified. The Beria case is a peculiar one. There are no fingerprints to be found. Normally, prisoners have their pictures taken from the front and side. Beria's case, on the other hand, contains only this photo. It looks as though it was taken from a family album. Writer Yelena Prudnikova supports a theory that has been rumored for half a century. She claims Beria was never interrogated, and the trial itself was a skillfully executed performance involving a body double. Somebody was indeed taken for questioning in summer. He always wore a cloak and a hat, and his face was hidden behind a scarf. Like this. But why did they need to do it in summer? It's clear that officers peeping from their rooms couldn't see that the man was not Barry at all. For victims of political persecution, Beria's name was synonymous with the repressions that swept everything away in their path in the 1930s. Those who survived the tyrannical years cannot forget the horrors that plagued them in that period. The nighttime whisper of black vans pulling up to the house, tenants apprehended without warning, charged for spying on the behalf of foreign intelligence services. All of them would either face execution or end up in a prison camp. Such vans would enter the courtyard during the night. I was but a child then, but I still have very vivid memories of them. I was so scared that I couldn't fend off the dread I felt, no matter how hard I tried to. Zoya Serebakova's life story is typical of a whole generation. Her father took part in the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution. As his career progressed, he rose to the upper ranks, but ultimately it meant little. In the 1930s, Stalin had begun to get rid of the old guard of his predecessor, Vladimir Lenin. Whole families were being arrested. This one shows me in prison. As the daughter of enemies of the people, my father wasn't the only one they had arrested. That's exactly what the judge called me, daughter of enemies of the people. Abkhazia, a picturesque region in the Caucasus. Under Stalin, Abkhazia was compelled to join Georgia. Three decades before that, Lavrenti Beria had been born here in the village of Mercheul, high in the mountains. For nearly 40 years, Atari Kantaria taught at the local school. It stood side by side with the house where the Beria family lived. I can't remember anything negative about him. Lavrenti was a good pupil. When he grew up, his parents sent him to town to study there. Soviet leaders were fond of vacationing in Abkhazia. Abkhazia's leader, Nestor Lakoba, 
introduced the young hopeful Lavrenti Beria to his old friend Stalin. The two met here in 1931. By that time, Beria had already shown his worth by working in local state security agencies. Beria wrote a letter to Nesta Lakoma. Later, he ordered this and other letters to be found and destroyed. In that letter, Beria asked Nesta to put in a word for him so that Stalin didn't forget to meet him. Those letters have survived. I've seen them all. Stalin took note of the young activist. Soon after that, Beria was appointed head of the Georgian Communist Party. He immediately began planting loyalists in key posts. As for the man who had introduced him to Stalin, Beria now considered him a nuisance. In December 1936, Beria invited Nestor Lakoba to dinner. A few hours later, Lakoba suddenly felt sick. Everybody in Abkhazia knew that he had been poisoned, and people know it today too. The two doctors who said as much, Panchabadze and Semerjiev, were illuminated there and then. Lakoba's body was taken from the Georgian capital to Abkhazia, where it was given a state funeral in Suhum's botanical gardens. That was shortly before 1937, the year of the most massive political crackdown in the Soviet Union. It was a hero's funeral. By the way, Beria sent a wreath from Tbilisi, but he didn't turn up for it. I think he was afraid of retribution. After his death, Lakoba was declared an enemy of the people. And this signaled the start of mass repressions. Gagri is a Black Sea resort in Abhazia. In the 1930s, locals steered clear of this building just outside town. Writer Sergei Chekvedadze has found out that so-called political prisoners were kept here in the basements of the Interior Ministry's local division. As soon as all the paperwork was signed off on, the condemned were brought out from these basements and shot right here on this spot in the limestone pits by the seashore. Yuri Benia has spent his whole life here. After he was labeled a son of an enemy of the people, he lived with the stigma for 15 years. He was stripped of many rights, such as being barred from studying at a legal institute. His family home was deserted in 1937. 15 relatives, all of whom were well-to-do peasants, were shot for refusing to join Soviet collective farms. The crackdown on enemies of the people in this region was especially harsh. All the while, Stalin and Beria vacationed in nearby cottages. When I was a schoolboy, I saw Beria several times. He would come here with a wagon load of bodyguards. Beria always wore eyeglasses. He would go down the road with his hands behind his back. He looked like a man wanting to boss everybody around. For many years, whenever Abhazian families got together, even mentioning the names of relatives branded as enemies of the people was dangerous. Nowadays, when guests visit, Yuri Benia's grandson David hands him a vessel in the form of a horn reserved for special occasions. The guests drink wine from simple-looking glasses, but the first toast has no festive undertones. They are going to drink wine to commemorate the victims of the repressions unleashed by Stalin and Beria. Today, we remember all those who were repressed in the prime of their lives. The time has come for us to name their names without having to worry about a new crackdown. Let us never forget them. Moscow, Lubyanka Square, house number two. This is the headquarters of the Soviet Union's secret police. Beria took charge of this government department in 1938 after moving to the Soviet capital from Georgia. He was originally educated as a builder, but unlike his fanatical predecessors, he took a more practical approach to his work. After 1938, the reign of terror changed under Beria. It didn't come to an end, but was less massive in scope and was now focused on particular tasks. Beria took the Gulag system 
and incorporated it into the Soviet economy. One of Vladimir Lenin's associates, Anton of Avsienko, was executed in 1938. His son Anton spent nearly 13 years in the Gulag. He knows from his own experience how Soviet economic progress was achieved in the 1930s and the price paid for it. He worked at numerous giant construction sites and was almost blind when he left prison camp. Each day we worked for 12 hours on end, plus the round trip from the barracks and back. The hungry and exhausted inmates just collapsed into a plank bed. The whole time they were plagued with thoughts about whether their wives and children had not been thrown out into the street, simply because they were related to an enemy of the people. Beria was also behind the establishment of secret research bureaus. Scientists and academics were rounded up on invented charges and forced into unpaid labor. Author of the Gulag Archipelago, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, spent several years in one of them. Needless to say, having to work in confinement was a negative experience for scientists. Moreover, many of them were arrested as an excuse to make them work in those outfits. But they saw it as a chance to be released ahead of time. Besides, there were better chances for survival there than in a regular prison camp. Scientists were given better food, and the work was not as harsh. One of Beria's top secret projects was a toxicological laboratory of the NKVD. Here, scientists tested poisons on people sentenced to death. Later, top Soviet leaders authorized the use of such poisons in politically motivated assassinations. The laboratory head is on record as reporting the following. Some 100 convicts were used for the purpose. More than half of them died as a result of the experiments. I wish to state categorically that I knew nothing about it. Beria was later told, I received instructions from above. Yes, it was Stalin who told him to supply the NKVD with poisons tested on humans. Today, a significant number of Russian communists are campaigning to have Beria exonerated. They feel he was one of Stalin's best managers. But modern-day communists prefer not to mention the price people paid for Beria's kind of order. Beria treated people as nothing but cogs in a machine. That's the way people were treated during those years. Whenever Beria was given a job to do, he just did it, and that's all. Shortly before the end of World War II, Beria was given a top-secret job, overseeing the development of the Soviet atomic bomb. Stalin ordered Beria to coordinate the cooperation between Soviet spies that were hunting out scientific information in the West and the USSR's nuclear physicists. Only a few people knew about Beria's task. 